All right, first take. Here we go. Two, one. Here I go again on my own. Talking on the only show I've ever known. Like a hipster, I was born to talk alone. Dun, 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 dun. And I made up my mind. Dun, 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 dun. I'm talking one more time. Ooh, that last note, that was like John. John Ralphio a little bit. Welcome everyone, never ending becoming James Smith Grat, and you're gonna hear my original voice, my real voice at some point. I've realized I wanna have some more fun on this show. I wanna have a bit more fun hosting this thing. Actually getting some freaky sounds out of my golden pipes here. Trying to articulate things in a way that even I can't understand. I'm not gonna let my desire for like improvement or for quality on this show stifle that X factor. You know, in the business, I think they sometimes call it the fun factor of a program. If you found that your podcast output has not been the optimal level as of late, if you're looking to produce more episodes, I have a few quick questions you can ask yourself. First being, do you hear a lot of jokes about people who have podcasts? The incessant, every guy over 30 has a podcast. After the age of 35, there's only two personalities, smoking meats and shooting the breeze on podcasts. Are they getting to you, these jokes? Maybe not. Have you been stricken with a vocal illness, preventing you from flapping your trap? Is that why you're not putting out episodes? Maybe not. Loneliness, perhaps, could be the case. A lot of times when you think that isn't the case, that could be the case. Even bringing it up makes you wonder. A lot of other shows are gonna offer you easy answers. It's nothing easy. A lot of times you'll hear some dude pretending like there's clarity. There's a right move and a wrong move. An alpha decision and a beta stumble. No easy answers on Never Ending Becoming. I don't even know the name of the show. Saying the name of the show isn't even easy. You think your life's gonna be easy? I can barely say the name of my own podcast that I named. People talk about wearing rose-colored glasses, seeing the world through rosy-tinted shades. It's not the way I like to do business. I, myself, will go get a stock pair of Ray-Bans, kind of pull a Casey Neistat, just take some spray paint, hazing agents, spray over the front of them. People think you're a little crazy. Some people think you're building brand. Me, I'm just trying to see the world how it really is. Through a, a haze that doesn't actually allow me to see every detail. Doesn't give me the arrogance that comes with clear sightedness, thinking that you could somehow make out enough to make the correct decision. I do not believe that's the case. I wear slate colored glasses, maybe like an onyx sort of shade. See the world with the haze, then you won't be phased when it actually ends up that way. So no easy answers today, but you might actually get the right questions, right? If you want the right life, you have to ask the right questions, or I need to ask the right questions. Someone needs to ask the right questions, all right? Let's get into it. Couple ones for summer. We're already past the halfway mark in July. 4th of July was two solid weeks ago as of this recording date, July 18th. Got a question about summer. Has your air-conditioned home lulled you into forgetting that summer is almost halfway over? Do your blinds and drapes, well, blind you from seeing the majesty of the sun in its most prolonged and glorious state? Have you applied sunscreen more times this year than there are number of Fast and the Furious movies released? 10th one came out this year, but there's like other ones in the franchise, like Hobbs and Shaw, so that's, it's a lot. There has to be one time a day between the 4th of July and Labor Day. I'm just making up a rule here. I'm not saying it should be law necessarily, punishable by extreme fine, death, something. But I think we as a society should come up with some sort of social shaming situation that forces you once per day between the 4th of July and Labor Day, 
the good summer days, the guarantees once per day to go, man, it's hot. If you don't say, man, it's hot, at least once per day after the fourth, you're spending too much time indoors. We have air conditioned cars and homes. I get it. I love it. But if you don't find yourself saying, man, it's hot. At least once a day. Got to get outside. Could be a vitamin D thing now. Could be a socio, psycho, sexual, emotional thing now. It's probably a thing. Man, it's hot. A little bit of catch up, uh, old things that are just, you know, popping up again. Humans are running out of new ideas. We've all seen the same movies get made, same franchises, same characters. But um, one of the new popular apps the last couple weeks, Threads, is basically a Twitter clone from, as you know, Meta. Twitter is, of course, a 15 year old platform where marketers talk to marketers about marketing. And I can only assume then that Threads will be where lonely people talk to lonely people about loneliness. But you know, with like SpongeBob SquarePants memes and something to gussy up the mood a bit. It already seems like it popped and fizzled and it's kind of over. I did join Threads, feel free to add me on there. Um, for, for the next two weeks, Threads probably will be in existence. The serial number on your Instagram account for Threads now is gotta be the most hilarious visual decision to take was basically like a prisoner number that Meta has for you into plaster at the top of the most what's supposed to be the most aesthetic social media profile, your Instagram landing page. And after seeing years of people's crafted, color schemed grids, coordinated layouts, for them to just to slap the prison serial number of who they view you to be in their database on threads, on your own account, right at the top, chef's kiss. Other threads in the fabric of humans are out of ideas. One of the magnificent seven hottest stocks in the world, Tesla, it's just a box on wheels uh, with a bigger battery. Uh, another thing I've noticed in terms of running out of ideas, the phenomenon in the alcoholic beverage industry where they just keep repackaging different wine coolers with new labels and somehow creating brands around these things. White Claw, High Noon, Buzz Tooth, Little Boy, Little Boy Beer. There's um, Golden Rod. I think they could sell. And then just right off the top of my head, I want to say endangered, I think just like endangered beer company. And it would kind of seem like the money was going to go to endangered species, but I don't, I don't find that you would actually need that. I think you could just put like a jungle print on the can and, and just have endangered be in the brand name. And I think there would be a couple dollars to be made there. I actually wrote some jokes about these different like carbonated wine coolers. I'm gonna read them, although it's a little embarrassing like seeing them even on my own phone now. You must be high around noon to want to spend $2 on a carbonated wine cooler. I'm sure you have white claws if you're comfortable enough with your position in society to want to sit around drinking an adult beverage all day that was seemingly designed to teach children how to drink. A little wordy, still kind of funny. I just want to mention the car company Carvana on the show. For those of you who are not familiar, it's a used car website masquerading as a tech company, which is what everyone does now. I had some personal anecdotes with it. For instance, I have a neighbor who has a Carvana license plate holder in a different midsize or compact Toyota sedan over and over again, different cars, different models, different colors that they're clearly just buying and returning over and over in Carvana. I don't know if they work for the company. I don't know how you're allowed to do that, but it would blow my absolute friggin' mind if this company continues to survive. I mean, it's just a car website. Also Carvana, like car Nirvana, kind of amazing. And just the thought of some of the brand equity built in Nirvana, Vana, that sort of like tone, that feel, Carvana to be tapping into that for a car company to be co-opting Nirvana to sell stuff, it's very of the now, you know? I know that's been happening a long time. Like Nirvana has been a brand you see in like Target, you know, on shirts and posters and have, have for 20 years, but 
it's still nice that they're getting play, especially in corporate America for companies that have no business existing. The used car market, it kind of seems like real estate. Like it's it's like local. Like you have to know like who, like who the car came from. Like you have to be able to see the person and then sort of make your peace with what you know that type of person did in it. Like some people you meet, you're like, this person was smoking in this car. You know, there's no doubt about it. They were just like <laughs> sucking them down blowing it right into the the visor that you should be putting down for your eyes but instead they're maybe putting it to the side so people can't see that they have like some sort of lit cigarette or something hanging out of their mouth other people they're going to be eating in the car obviously they're stopping through drive throughs you're going to have ketchup stains in the crotch maybe a mustard stain on the dash how should mustard stain black leather don't ask me it's not real leather usually that stuff it's pleather it's like a plastic composite the camera is now straight tripping, so I'm going to check this video footage. It's been a while since I've had a guest on the podcast. I'm actually excited to do it again. Since I've had my last guest on, they've released some artificial intelligence podcasting editing software, basically. It's something that plugs into existing software like Adobe Premiere. It basically just goes back and forth based on audio signals, whether one person's talking or the other. So as opposed to having like your cousin or like, your friend who's a pothead sit in front of a video switcher and go back and forth between a cam b cam you know maybe a wide cam you can just have this software do it choosing even how aggressive it is with the cuts based on someone speaking so as long as you're sophisticated enough to be able to throw like my voice say on channel one your guests on channel two three and then you just look at those different audio sources as different people it easily can switch cams based on who you're trying to highlight show off. The Screen Actors Guild just joined the Writers Guild of America on strike and it now has me thinking doubly. If you podcast about the strike, say you're in the Writers Guild and then you go on a podcast to talk about it, are you a scab? Like if you're in SAG, if you're one of the actors and then you go on your podcast and talk about the strike, knowing full well that like your type of show, your type of content is the content that's making the other productions economically unviable. Are you creating the problem? Are you sowing the seeds of your own destruction? As it's commonly put, does your indie side YouTube show directly undermine your current contract negotiations with the big dogs? with the gatekeepers. I was hanging out with some people recently and someone's child was there and he was reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is a friggin' classic. It got me thinking, cause the kid said he had read the book four or five times, nine, 10, 11 years old. I don't know how old this person child is, but they're like reading this book five times. Harry Potter rules. Hermione, fascinating. Ron, we love him. You know, we do. Five times? I feel like there's more there for the young man. I, I feel like maybe he's being sheltered. Give him something else to read. Ron? 